Welcome to Hope City Online. You're about to hear a message that's part of a series. Check it out and consider joining us in person on Sundays. Our vision for you is that you would have a thriving relationship with Jesus, that you would know Him, you would find community and discover your purpose as you prioritize your relationship with God. So get in touch with us at hopecity.my slash hello for more details and you can subscribe to our Hope City KL YouTube and podcast channels so you won't miss out on any of our future content. Enjoy this message from our special guest today. Hey everyone, what a delight to be talking with you again all around the world in our C3 churches. I'm so looking forward to sharing this message. We've been in some very, very revitalizing conferences lately, seeing the power of God move as we regather, as we come back together again out of two, three years. I'm not seeing one another such a delight, catching up with one another and feeling the fellowship and uh, being able to be on altar calls something we, we can't do on Zoom and be able to feel that corporate worship together. And then all the things that are on either end of the bookends of great church services, which, you know, we haven't been able to do the meeting and the talking in the foyers and uh, the after meeting glow and vibe. It's all been so good. And, and I'm looking forward to being at our conferences in various places around the world. So please make sure you're there uh, with your team, especially your youth leaders and especially business people in the church and board members and uh, obviously the main team players uh, of, of your congregation, main influencers, whoever. Uh, as we get together uh, and regather, we're going to find ourselves being inspired, moving forward and finding the pathway that God's got for us, which is incredible. No doubt about it. So a couple of years ago, I spoke on recharging. And, uh, and obviously that was needed because we had, there were so many people discouraged, disillusioned, disappointed, having trouble with new rhythms of life in church with on-off services, shutdowns, lockdowns, etc. And then uh, once we started to get easing, from governments around the world, I uh, found myself with a message from the Lord called The Great Return out of Psalm 126. And, uh, and I've been speaking that uh, uh, until more recently, and we'll keep talking about it when it's needed. But uh, I feel uh, the, the word rebuilding is really something that is coming to pass in many of our congregations, and we need to talk about it and, and to understand how God rebuilds. Uh, the very first thing that happened in the rebuilding of Jerusalem, the temple, the walls, uh, the city, and the homes of the people in Jerusalem after they came back from Babylon, after Cyrus sent them back, and they said, the Lord's done crazy things for us, amazing things for us. One of the first things that they made sure they did was create the altar. And uh, I believe that that has got to be the first step that all of us take. As we move into a new day personally, I put myself again on the altar and I say, Lord, whatever you want, I'm at your disposal. I'm your servant, your bond servant, uh, your slave to carry out your will, not mine. And so I'm on the altar saying, Lord, I, I'm, I'm signing up for whatever, whatever you want, whatever you need me to do. I'm here. I'm available. And, and hopefully we're presenting a life that he can use that's useful not one that he needs to a lot of work on. But as we come to Christ with lives that he can take a hold of and use, that altar is going to be one of the first things that we reinstitute in church life. Rather than just thinking, oh, we've got to get our volunteers back. We've got to get our musicians back. We've got to get these people and, and, and call on them. Reinvigorating people's spiritual life becomes so important. Because that's the basis, that's the beginning where we've moved from where Jesus is our Savior to where now He is our Lord, which is what the book Disciple that I've recently written and now available in physical copies, many churches are buying it and using it for uh, group discussion, for connect groups, for training uh, people in the world of discipleship and disciple making. And so I wanted to bring that book to the fore so that people can move into that altar experience where it's not Jesus giving his life for us. 
It's us giving our life for Him. It's not where He picks up the cross to die for us. We pick up the cross now to die for Him. And I believe that that changeover has to take place to get us out of a self-absorbed, consumeristic Christianity into one which is Christ-absorbed and where we are giving and generous, generous, living out our lives of generosity. And so you and I have been called by God to rebuild the church and it's a, it's a great reset. It's a great opportunity. It's a great moment to actually uh, take advantage of and reconstruct and restructure the way we do in life and do in church and seek Him and get guidance and strategy from the Holy Spirit. He has got it as to how we move forward into the, into the whole new church day that we're living in. Certainly He guided them in the book of Acts and He will guide you and I today. Matthew 16 verse 18 is a key scripture, obviously in the building of the church, where Jesus Himself said to the disciples, I also say to you that you are Peter, and says to Peter, like, and he changed his name in one sentence from Simon to Peter. And it's the new, it's the new us that Jesus builds his church on, the spiritual us. And you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. I will. This is his will, clearly stated. And I will build, not gather, not grow, not swell but build my church, which means joining elements together and uh, brick by brick, board by board. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. So the big part of this message that I would like us to grasp is that the Lord is building His church. I listen to a lot of podcasts, maybe four four or five a week, uh, some preaching, some secular, some church consultants stuff, leadership. Most of it, I come away feeling like it's all depending on me. That if I don't do this, then this is going to happen. That if, if, if I make a mistake, then I've got to recover and regroup. If, if uh, we, uh, just the whole sense of a heavy load in some of them, I'm not saying all of them, but just, and I, I think, why am I feeling that? I'm not hearing the Lord will build His church. The Spirit of God is going to come and revive your people. God is with you to help you. That's what I need to hear. And I feel like it's what I need to say. What I need to tell us that when in Psalm 126, they said, the Lord has done amazing things for us where we are glad. And I found that a, a difficult verse to draw much out of. But as I thought about it more and more, I realized they were saying, when God works, it's amazing. Like a Cyrus, a Persian, pagan, idol-worshipping king who's conquered the world, wants to give thanks to Yahweh. And so he sends his people back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple because he's told about a prophecy that a Isaiah of 150 years before, should, he's shown that possibly by Daniel, that man, this is, this is God talking about you. So he says, I better do it. That's amazing. They've been 70 years in Babylon and it's crazy. They're thinking the Lord has done crazy things for us. They didn't say we had a board meeting and we managed to get it. A, a rebuild happening. Uh, we managed to get delivered out of Babylon. We had a, we had a committee meeting. We, we had a church growth seminar. We had a, a, a concept debrief and we managed. To, it was none of that. It was the Lord. God is involved with you and I in building His church. As we, we don't have to simply think it's all on us. He says, take my yoke on you. Well, we do. And he says, it's light and easy. You know why? Because who's doing the heavy lifting? The other, the other oxen, we're just walking with him, working with him, doing the things he's called us to do. It's not meant to be hard and heavy. It's meant to be light and easy. And so if our Christianity is hard and heavy, 
I think we might be carrying the, lo- the wrong burden because he said, hey, it's light and easy. It's beautiful. It's a joy to serve the Lord. David said, I delight to do the will of God. So I just really want to tell you here today that the Lord is involved with your life. When we talk about faith, it's not about having faith in faith. It's about having faith in God having faith that He will work with you and I to bring to pass all kinds of things. And so no matter how many strategies and ideas we listen to, above it all, there's a God. Now, now you've got to understand that God has guided His people into doing some pretty crazy things. And so you wouldn't, in a strategy meeting, say, look, we've got to whittle this army down from 30,000 to 300. Who would do that? Nobody in their right mind. But God did that to Gideon so that he would be relying on God, not on his numbers, not on his his force. Who would pour water, the very thing you need because you're in a drought, six times the pouring, pouring, pouring over a sacrifice that you are believing will burst into flames? I mean, it's ridiculous. What kind of strategy is that? Who would lead three million just escaped slaves after 400 years down a roadway that's a dead end with the world's most powerful army coming up behind you? You'd you'd turn to the desert or something, wouldn't you? You'd, You'd turn somewhere that was a possible escape route. But they followed a cloud that gave them a strategy that led them, boom, straight to the Red Sea you got an ocean in front of you, for goodness sake, and an army behind you, mountains to the north, desert to the south. Where are you going to go? You're in a cul-de-sac. What kind of strategy is this? Well, they, they, Moses didn't forget the God factor. The people did. But Moses, he's there. He's saying, where do we go now, Lord? He says, straight forward. He says, how's that going to happen? Put your rod out. We'll make a path in the sea. We'll make a path where there's no path. God is involved with you and I, no matter how difficult, how challenging our circumstances are, the Lord's on our side. If God is for us, who can be against us? And we will find, even though, look, look, over the last three years, it has been crazy. Churches have shut down. A lot of meetings have shut down. Seems like people have got discouraged, disappointed, despondent about things. Pastors have felt very, very discouraged sometimes. And then on top of that, we've had scandals. Some of the, some of the most horrific scandals. And we think, oh, is it, how's everything going to keep on going? But the church doesn't miss a beat. It keeps on moving forward because it is a prevailing church. The church that Jesus is building is unstoppable. It is immovable. It cannot be shaken. It can can be shaken, but it can't be shaken out. Many times throughout history, there have been those who have tried to stamp the church out, to kill it, to kill the Bible, to kill the Christians. But we've only ever increased. The Lord is building His church. God is involved in building His church. Paul said, Paul planted the polis water, but God gave the increase. And God is in heaven. His power exceeds every other power, not only in this earth, but in the universe. He created the universe. And His church, His people on earth will prevail. There's no doubt about it. And you and I have to understand that God is involved with us and it's easy. Now, the very next verse after Psalm 126 is in Psalm 127, obviously, verse 1. And it says, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Okay, so this is building and protection. And he is saying, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. If we are building the church or attempting to build the church without a sense 
without a faith that God is with us, we're going to be laboring in vain. And I wonder if some of our labors that haven't worked, haven't worked because our trust was in ourselves and not in the Lord. Over the years, uh, I've been in quite a number of conferences and panels and various things where people have asked us. And in the early days, we experienced incredible growth. It was just amazing. And people say, what are you doing? How do you do this? How do you grow the church? And we would sort of give out seven points or five points or we did this and we did that. Honestly, sometimes we had no idea how God had managed to get past all of our mistakes and bumblings and weaknesses and still grow the church. But he does. And sometimes I wonder if he grows the church better when things are more difficult and in our weaknesses than it does when we're so strong in ourselves, thinking we've got the leadership principles, we've got church growth principles, we've got this idea, that idea. I think that when we trust the arm of flesh, we're going to find ourselves with very challenging difficulties going on. And certainly God doesn't get impressed when our trust is in the, in the arm of flesh or the machinery of man and it's not in him to grow the church unless the Lord builds the church. Builds the house. They labor in vain. Don't be laboring in vain. The second part of that is that the Lord can guide us with strategy. And so we need to look up. Rather than just having a horizontal views, I will lift up my eyes. And then we get a strategy from God about how we should travel. Remember, Paul tried to go into Asia, forbidden by the Holy Spirit. Tried to go here, forbidden by the Holy Spirit. He went there later. The timing wasn't right. So getting timing and pathways and strategies right means I'm looking up before I make big decisions as boards, as committees, as youth leaders, as financiers, as business people, whatever we are involved in doing, let's look up and let the Lord get involved in building the house so that we're not laboring in vain. And then protection is in there as well. But because we're talking about rebuilding, I just wanted to stay with this, you know, uh, the, the scriptures very often will tell us that when we put our trust elsewhere, it isn't just a negative that's neutral. It's a negative that works against us. Psalm 20 verse 7 says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. I mean, it's good to have chariots and horses, insurance policies, building programs, schedules, budgets, plans for the future. But all of that needs to be secondary to God enthroned over us all, who can change us, adjust us, change directions at any time we are His servants. Proverbs 21 verse 31, The horse is prepared for the day of battle, but deliverance is of the Lord. So we do prepare all of our, I'm not dismissing, any of the, the, the works and the ideas that we have. But let's just bring them to God. Let's put them under the Lord and not make them our trust. We're only going to get frustrated and disappointed if our trust is in the arm of flesh. Isaiah 31 verse 1, Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and rely on horses, who trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong, but who do not look to the Holy One of Israel nor seek the Lord. Great management is not going to bring a move of God. Looking to God is. And that will change everything. And you and I in this hour, as we move towards rebuilding, resetting, regathering, reviving, recharging, restoring, recovering, as we look to doing all of that, it begins with being involved with God and God being involved with us. It's His church. It's His earth. We're His people. We can't execute these equations without involving God. It's not just horizontal. He needs to be involved. And if we seek Him in prayer, the prayer meeting is definitely where this begins. When we seek the Lord, we come together, we believe together, we pray together, we're going to find that His power visits us as we gather together under His banner, under His name, 
glorifying Him. Such a pleasure to be talking with you today. I'm praying that faith will come into your heart for the church of the future as we start to believe God together for a mighty new revival, a massive new disciple-making revival that plants churches all around the globe so that we literally see thousands of churches, millions of believers, worshipers coming to Christ in this hour and magnifying the Lord of the whole earth. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you soon. Hey, if you've enjoyed this message, check out for more on our Hope City KL YouTube and podcast channels. For those who want to know more about Jesus, find a Christian community to be part of, or if you're exploring the faith, why don't you join us this coming Sunday for our 11 a.m. service? We are a growing, vibrant church in the heart of Pataling Jaya in Malaysia, and we have interactive kids program for 2 to 12. We have facilities for parents with under 2s, and we've got freshly brewed coffee or tea available for 30 minutes before each service. We're so confident that you're going to leave Really encouraged. So find out more on our website, hopecity.my, or follow us on Instagram or Facebook right now. We can't wait to host you.